We recently talked about the coaster that each California park needs most, so today let's do the same thing but for every Pennsylvania theme park. There were a few things I kept in mind while making my choices. The main ones were the gaps in the park's coaster lineups and the audience of the park. These two things are important and it led to the decisions I made throughout this video. Also, I do have to note two somewhat major Pennsylvania parks that will be excluded. Number one is Conneaut Lake Park. This park currently only has one coaster and it opened in 1950, so I'm not too optimistic that they'll get any of her coasters anytime soon. Then the second one is none other than Lake Mott Park. Unfortunately, this park will not be running their rides for the 2024 season, which doesn't necessarily bode well. And because of that, I won't be including them on the list. Let's get started with Dorney Park. This is a Cedar Fair owned park that for a long time hasn't gotten very much investment. At least that's changing somewhat for 2024 with the addition of the B&M dive coaster Iron Menace. This probably wasn't the best possible addition to the park, but it's a lot better than no addition, and so I'm a fan that they're finally getting a new coaster. This park has a small but relatively solid coaster lineup, but there is one coaster I think could really put it over the top. This is never going to actually happen. Keep in mind, this is what I think they could use the most, not necessarily what I think is the most likely but a terrific addition would be a Mock Rides Extreme Spinning Coaster. These look phenomenal, and it would be the new standout coaster for Dorney Park. Not only that, but their only launch coaster currently is Possessed, which is fine for what it is, it's an intimate impulse coaster, but this would provide a completely different launch coaster experience along with filling the spinning coaster gap. As I said, it's never gonna happen, but I think it would be a perfect addition to this park and all of a sudden, people from far and wide would want to visit Dorney Park. Dutch Wonderland doesn't have the same level of thrill coasters as Dorney Park. This is a relatively small park, but they do have a couple of nice coasters for kids, including Kingdom Coaster and Merlin's Mayhem. It's owned by Parques Renudos and the aforementioned Merlin's Mayhem was added in 2018, so it's possible that they'd be willing to invest in another coaster here. And if they did, I think a Mock Rides Family Spinning Coaster would be a great fit. In particular, I have something like Cobra's Curse at Busch Gardens Tampa in my mind, which is one of the newer Mock Family Spinning Coasters. Again, it's kind of similar to Ride to Happiness that it's built by Mock and it's a spinning coaster, but obviously Dutch Wonderland would never add a Mock Extreme Spinner. That is not the age demographic that they're looking for. Dutch Wonderland currently doesn't have a spinning coaster, but they do have a coaster that's not on the track and they do have a wooden coaster, and while I do think they could use some airtime in their park, maybe this spinning coaster could offer some nice drops. From Dorney to Dutch Wonderland to Hershey Park. Now this is the pinnacle of Pennsylvania theme parks as far as roller coasters go. It's one of the best coaster lineups in the entire country. They currently have 14 with no noticeable gaps. They have standout coasters, they have ejector machines, they have floater machines, they have multi-loopers, they have wooden coasters, all of it. The point is, they don't really need any coasters because they have a very good lineup as is. But okay, next coaster edition for Hershey Park, what should it be? I think a good one would be, going back to Mock Rides, a Mock Rides Family Launch Coaster. Something perhaps like Manta at SeaWorld San Diego. The park's family coaster lineup is already pretty good, but one thing this park does lack is an intermediate launch coaster. The one launch coaster they have is Storm Runner, which is a pretty legit thrill ride. So this would provide a stepping stone attraction for kids and families to enjoy. In the coaster department, Hershey Park is absolutely loaded. The same can't exactly be said for Idle Wild. This is another Parque's Renudo's own park. Here are the park's three coasters. Rollo Coaster opened in 1938 and is a family style wooden coaster. Wild Mouse is a very rare Vacoma Wild Mouse, but it's pretty much just a Wild Mouse. And then for 2024, they will be opening a Zamperla Family Gravity Coaster. As you can see, this park's target audience is families, and they don't get new coasters very often. That said, I think a great addition would be a Vacoma Family Boomerang. This is still in that family demographic, and you could get these for relatively inexpensive prices. Plus, they would now have a coaster that goes backwards. Getting a new, modern steel coaster, even if it is for families, would go a long way into improving this park, I think, and it would probably be their best ride. Parques Renudo strikes again with Kennywood. This park currently has eight operating roller coasters, and is a pretty major park. Their coaster lineup is kind of odd, in the sense that it's headlined by two major steel coasters in Phantom's Revenge, the Morgan Hypercoaster, 
and Steel Curtain, the SNS multi inversion record breaking coaster. While also featuring not one, not two, but three wooden coasters that opened in the 1920s. It's incredible to see that these coasters are still operating, and from what I've heard, still operating at a pretty high level. I think a B&M wing, specifically a launch B&M wing, could be a good fit here. They do have a couple multi-inversion coasters already with Skyrocket and Steel Curtain, but both of those sit on the track like a traditional coaster, and a B&M wing provides that different dynamic. Plus, you could get a more powerful launch into the park. B&M may be a little too expensive for Parque and Renudo's tastes, but then again, we have seen them add some pretty big coasters over the years. Let's go to Knobles now. This, like Kennywood, feels like a classic park. This one opened in 1926 and is headlined by none other than Phoenix. This coaster is said to have tons of amazing airtime, and even though it's not that tall or not that fast or not that new, it's that airtime that puts it over the top as one of the best wooden coasters out there. The rest of the coaster lineup is interesting, headlined by Flying Turns, the in-house wooden bobsled coaster. With that being said, I think a good addition to this park would be a Vacoma multi-launch, maybe multi-inverted coaster. Now, there are a few things to note with this. Yes, they do have Impulse, which does have a couple inversions, but this and the Vacoma launch coaster would be very different. And more importantly, this park doesn't currently have a launch coaster. A major gap. It fills a couple of gaps, and it would bring a lot of notoriety to the park, because there aren't any of these New Age Vacomas in America yet, at least not these extreme launch coasters. So how about Knobles getting out in front of everyone else? That would really be something. I think it would be a good addition. Sesame Place is an interesting one. They are owned by the Sea Roll chain, who isn't necessarily afraid to add coasters, but this isn't a park that gets tons of coaster investment on a regular basis. Their most recent coaster edition came in 2018, and it's also their best ride. Oscar's Wacky Taxi isn't even 45 feet tall, but it has 12 airtime points and looks like a great family wooden coaster from the Gravity Group. This is a family park, and you know what, I think a good addition would be a Mock Rides Family Launch Coaster. Yes, I know, we talked about this with Hershey Park earlier, but the reasons for this are a little bit different when it comes to a smaller park like Sesame Place. This would be different enough than Vapor Trail to stand out, but of course the main reason you add this is because Sesame Place doesn't have a launch coaster, and these are plenty approachable for kids and plenty fun for adults. I guess we've kind of had a Mock Rides theme today. Okay, last one is Waldemir. Waldemir currently has five coasters, and the standout is Ravine Flyer 2. This park has two spinning coasters, both family friendly, and another family friendly wooden coaster along with Ravine Flyer 2. So I think they need a standout, multi inversion, extreme launch coaster. Let's go to Intamin for it. With Ravine Flyer 2, this would create quite the one two punch for Waldemir. And these coasters would be extremely different from one another, so I think it would work really well. This part currently doesn't have a single inversion, and this coaster, along with those launches, could certainly offer some inversions and airtime moments. Again, will this happen? Absolutely not. Their last major coaster edition was Ravine Flyer 2 back in 2008, so I don't see this happening in the slightest, but a man can dream. I think it would be a phenomenal addition to this park, and it would absolutely put them on the map even more than they already are. So there you have it, my thoughts as to the coaster that each Pennsylvania park could use the most. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think. There are certainly a lot of options for each of these parks and there's so many manufacturers to choose from and all that, so let me know what you would change in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching, please consider subscribing if you haven't, and I'll see you all next time.